because um, that confirms everything you were just teaching and everything Christians pretty much deny. Really? Okay, well, I'm happy to investigate that. Yes, sir. This one? Do, do King James. Okay. Because that's, what, mo that's what most real scholars say. All right, King Jimmy. King Jimmy. Yeah. That's funny. Okay. There it is, right there. Verse 4. Ah, wow. I had forgotten about this one. I didn't look at the whole context when I was preparing yeah. this. Blaze it with you. Do his commandments. Wow. So and this is interesting because this shows up at the end of the book of Revelation. Right. At the end of the book of Malachi, what is the injunction at the end of Malachi? It says, remember the law of Moses. Welcome to Tanakh Talk. I'm your host, William Hall, broadcasting live from Kingsland, Texas, USA, with another episode of Learning Hebrew using the weekly tour portion. Gabriel R.A. Sanders. Welcome back, my friend. And I'm just, That's a really, really friend. long title. <laughs> you know what? I, you know what's funny? I found um, I was looking up somebody else's classes one time, and they they had long titles. In fact, I uh, uh, I know who it was, but anyway, they had long titles. Uh, but I couldn't find anything because every title they moved words, they shifted them in different areas. So you couldn't just, your eyes couldn't easily just go down a list and see like, like ours is exactly the same every single week. So if you know that Parshat, you know, the Parshat name is like the sixth word over, you just look down the list at the sixth word over and just scan straight down and you Balak Pinchas, you know, you go down the list and you can find what you want just like that, you know, but when they scramble the title, you can't, you don't know where to look and it takes forever and it's like... You, it, people will give up, but fortunately, so, sounds like a cause for therapy. Yeah, it would be if we scrambled it like that. Uh, I like my eggs scrambled, but nothing else. So you guys are safe. <laughs> That's all I know. All right. Okay. So if you guys are tuning in for the very first time, I will put up on screen for you Gabriel's tour portion that he's pulling using his computer. I'll do the first reading of each verse, one line at a time. Actually, one verse at a time. And uh, Gabriel will come in behind me and then read it correctly the way it should be spoken. Um, and then after that, he will give you a literal breakdown of each word. If there's a prefix and a suffix uh, and a root word, he'll tell you what each one of those things are with, without explanation. Just basically speak them. Uh, and then he'll come back around a fourth time and actually give you the grammatic breakdown on that verse. And then we'll take as many verses as we can and say 40. 45, 50 minutes or so, and then the last 10 minutes of the show, he will give us a little bit of Torah wisdom based on the weekly Parsha, so you're getting basically two meals in one, and so that's where mm -hmm. we're at. Two for one special, we two like that. Two for one special, gotta like it. All right, so here we go. Without further ado, let's rock and roll. Okay, I noticed something right away in this verse, which which got me, oh no, this isn't the verse that I was looking at, uh, and this is not a pause for a break, but I saw something earlier before we started that had my brain scrambling, like we talked about scrambled eggs this morning. But it said, Vayomer uh, Moshe El Hashem. And I was like, wait a minute. Was that a trick on my brain, or did I really not see that? Um, and You can you will see that. Okay. I was like, what in the I don't. I don't think I've ever seen that with my eyes before. It's great. Okay, here we go. All right, I've got the white mouse. Vayomer. Let me just say one thing. As we, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But sure, go ahead. Let me just say, for the sake of those watching, this we are in Pasha Pinchas. But we're not starting with the beginning of the parasha. We're starting deeper in because today we're focusing on the death, of, or the pending death of Moshe. Oh, great. Thank you for clarifying that. That's perfect. Okay, here we go. Vayomer Hashem El Moshe Ale El Har Ha Avarim Hazer Ure Ure Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Et haaretz asher natati livne Yisrael. Yefemayot tamed vayomer Hashem el Moshe ale el har avarim haze ure et haaretz asher natati livne Yisrael. Vayomer and say or said, in this case, Hashem, to Moshe, Ale, go up, El, to Har, Mount, Avarim, the name of the mountain, Azeh, the this, Ha, 
Z, that is, Ur A and C, et, untranslatable, Haaretz, the land, Asher, which, Natati, I have given, Livne, to, children of, Yisrael. Okay, we as we have so many times, we begin with a reversing vav. This the power of this vav isn't just the word and that connects it to what was previously stated, but it also in this case takes the tense of the verb, the timing of the verb, and reverses it. Why? Shelatova. It's a good question, but that's what it does. So this is a future form. This is he will say. But because of this vav, it becomes he said. Well, who's the he? Hashem. To, word El, Moshe. Uh, Ale, this is the word for going up or ascent. Um, it's also the word for uh, going up to Jerusalem three times a year. And Ole Regal is a uh, pilgrim. So this is the dictionary form of the word. It's also here uses the command form. Ale, go up, ascend. And we have the word two again. We have it here and here. You say, well, I thought that's one of the names of God. It is, but that's not what it is in this case. El Har Ha'evarim. So we have to put these two things together. Har Ha'avarim. So the name of the mountain, this is Har. So you have Har Sinai, Har Grizim, uh, many different Harim in the Bible. And this one's called Ha'avarim. It's on the other side of the Jordan. So uh, an interesting piece of the Hebrew is if you want to say uh, this mountain, you're going to say Ha-Har Hazeh. In this case, it's Har Ha-Avarim. So we have the name, the mount, and gives the name of the mount. So it says Mount the Avarim, the this. So that's literally what we're dealing with here. So if you want to say, for example, uh, this boy in Hebrew, a lot of people know the name Yelid uh, for boy. We say Ha-Yelid Hazeh. So you're saying the boy, the this. And if it's a girl, we say Hayalda Hazot. So it's one of those little funny phenomena of Hebrew that you don't find so much in other languages, but you definitely see it also in the biblical text. Ur A. So here we have the same thing. We have a vav here, but it's not a conversive vav. It's a com it's a command form here. And C, basically saying, Re, see, see the land. This is also the root form of the word C, the Resh, the Aleph, and the He. And oftentimes in the command form, you're going to see that, especially in the category called Pa'al, for those of you that are grammatically literate to know what those seven categories are. If you're not, don't worry. We'll touch on it as we go. So it tells him to go up to the mountain and go and see what? Et ha'aretz. Now, this word et we've referred to many times and said that it's, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not a translatable word. It's simply a marker that stands in front of a direct uh, object, a definite direct object. What makes it definite? The hey, which means the. Uh, if it was just to see any land anywhere, it wouldn't have the et ha. So the et ha stands for this specifically, the, like ani et ha yelet, I see the boy, as opposed to ani yelet, I see a boy. Haaretz, what land is it? What is this land? Asher, which? Natati. I, give, I have given, or I gave. Now, in English, we have a distinction between I have given and I gave. One is called simple past, and the other is called uh, uh, present perfect. And I don't want to go down that road because it just makes people crazy. Um, but I just say that Hebrew doesn't distinguish between those two tenses. So sometimes somebody could translate this, I gave, or, in this, or I have given. Um, the difference between the two is it would is I'm not going to go there. That's the difference between the two. I'm going to resist the temptation <laughs> to tell you more than you want to know. By the way, somebody once said, maybe I said this before in the program, uh, I, I asked a student of mine last night um, online, I said, how do you know that somebody's a teacher? He said, I don't know, they teach? I said, no, no, no. You ask a question, and they tell you more than you want to know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I have to tell you, I have that temptation. So I have to pull myself back. It's like the tour guides in Israel. They know three or four times, whatever they're telling you in the moment, they know three or four times that material about the specific site that you're visiting. But they can't tell you it all. And I can't tell you all this. So I have given, live, nay, Yisrael. 
So livne, this uh, so this comes from the word ben, or banim is the plural for son and sons. Two, and in this case we have a noun plus noun. We've talked about that many times now on the program. That noun plus noun. If the first noun is masculine plural, that would ending with a mem, the mem goes out to lunch, and the im becomes a. Live ne Yisrael. Many many examples of this. So if you're not quite sure what that means, don't worry. Keep coming back. It'll all be clear in the future. Let's move on to the next verse because I really want to cover a lot of things here today. Okay, sounds good. Here we go. Let me turn my mic down just a tiny bit. All right, there we go. All right. Um, vera ita ota. Vene esafta. Yep. Et ameka gum ata kaasher neesaf aharin, excuse me, aharon achika. Fantastic. Viraita ota veneesafta. El Amecha Gam Ata Kaasher Nesaf Aron Achicha And you will see basically Is um, that where's the you have I have Okay, so normally what you'd have here is you would not have that hay there. You would have Raita, right? Okay. That would be the past of you. The past would be you saw. So the uh, top would be. This, the top would be from Ata. Okay, so that would be the U part. Okay. okay, got it. All right, but this is an unusual construction of the word. You don't usually see a hay here. So it's 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 kind of rare. I was surprised when I said. Usually you see, you'll see that right there. Okay. Viraita. So. There are some exceptional cases where that hay is there. So it's again, we have the reversing vowel, and this is in the past, but the implication or the interpretation of it is in the future. And he's saying here, when you, when, when thou hast seen it, basically it would be when you, when you will see it. Ota, what is this ota referring to? Usually ota means she, or it can mean it if the noun that it's referring to is feminine. And that's the case here. It's referring to a feminine noun. Well, what is the feminine noun that's referring to? What's the, we in the grammatical terms? We say what is the antecedent? What came before? Well, we have to go all the way back up to the next verse, and either pick on Yisrael, or more likely here, Haaretz, Veraita Ota. What's the Ota? Haaretz, the land. Because the word land it doesn't end with a hey, doesn't end with a tough, but it happens to be feminine. Just so, put that in your uh, personal dictionary. Um, so, v'raita ota, v'neesafta, v, again, and, neesafta. So, this ta here and this ta here, they're both talking about you. So, it's second person, masculine, singular. And the word neesaf, what's the, what's the root? What's the shorish? Aleph, samach, pe, or fe in this case. And it comes from the word collect or gather. We'll say, well, hey, what's this nun doing here? Isn't the nun referring to future, like for we, anachnu? Not in this case. There's a whole category, and I'll just show it to you quickly. That's not what I want to show you. That's uh-huh. what I want to show you. <laughs> um, there's a whole category called nifal. And I don't want to go in depth to it, but if you go to palim.com, you can find all this. And basically we have... Uh, I gathered the straw. The straw was gathered. Well, the straw was gathered is the nifal category. Okay, somebody did something to something, and so here you see the different forms of it. Here's the present, and here's the past forms. And look here, we find it right here. Neesafta, nesa. You, you were collected, or in this case, it's gathered. Let me go back to the text here. And we're dealing again with a reversing vav. How do I know that this is a reversing vav over this one over here? Because of the accent here. The only reason I leave these these trump marks on, the cancellation marks, is because they're really important to knowing, to put the, as I like to say, the emphasis on the right syllable. Right. right? 
So, so because uh, normally, if it were just a regular, uh, and you were gathered, it would be ne'esafta. But this is ne'esafta. Such a subtle difference, right? Right. And these are things that take a long time to acquire, and that's why what we're doing, I think, is a. If you're willing to take the slow boat to China with us here, as far as your learning process, this is really rich, and this is how I learned with Dr. Uh, Paul Gabeline from Fuller Seminary many, many decades ago. So, so Neasapta, you will be gathered, basically. Here it says it right here, Thou shalt, you shall be gathered. So it tells you, the English tells you it's future. But if you didn't have that, how would you know? Well, that's how you know. You have the vowel plus the accent is in a different place than it would be if it were regular past. That's the key. The accent mark is in a different place. Okay, we have the word L again, too. Amecha. So am, the word am with an I in here is people. And this is peoples in this case. Amecha. Um, you say, well, what happened to the mem for amim? You know, when it says, uh, Beit filala kol amim, my house should be called a house of prayer for all the peoples. Well, the word amim. But again, it's like noun plus noun when there's a pronominal suffix here on the end indicating who is being talked about here. In this case, cha, this is you. So this cha here indicates that Hashem is speaking to Moshe, talking about your people. So again, you can see it over here in, in the English, but we're really trying to identify it in the Hebrew text. So we go back to this, and you will see Ota, the land, and you will be gathered to your people. Also, Gam, Ata, you, Ka'asher, like, uh, or as, Ne'esaf, was gathered. Now, this is this is future, and this is past. You see, you see it over here, but this is this is the past form of Ne'esaf, Aaron, Aaron, Achicha. That's a funny word to say, right? Uh -huh, yeah. Achicha. Literally, it, it, more correctly, it would be Achicha, but it's hard for people to pronounce that letter that exists between a regular H and a Chaf. You know, so there's there is a letter that exists between them. And the Mizrahis, the Eastern or Middle Easterners, can say it pretty well. Arabic, for sure. So, Achicha is brother. Ach, Chicha, your brother. We'll say, wait a minute, this was plural here. Is that plural here? It looks like it, but I'm sorry to disappoint you. It's not. So, <laughs> um, all right, so I'm um, trying to think of anything else. I think we've really covered all the grammatical parts of it that I want to cover here. Let's keep moving. Okay. All right. Ka'asher. Marite, uh, excuse me, Maritem, P, Bamidbar, Tsiv, wait, no, Tsin, <laughs> I know that's not a Vav, what am I thinking, <laughs> Tsin, I don't know what that is, but you'll have to clarify that, uh, B, Mrivat, B, Mrivat, I'm going to go with that, Haeda. Lahak Dishani Bamayim La Aene La Aene Hem Hem Me Mirbat Maribat Ah Marie Yeah Maribat Kadesh Midbar Tsin Lovely Kasha Ritem P Bamidbar Tsin Bim Rivat Haida Lahagdisheni Vamayim Lainehem Lainehem, excuse me Hem Me Me Rivat Kadesh Midbar Tsin Kasha means, it uh, can mean when, it can generally it does here. Um, interesting they didn't translate it here. So this is when, meritem. Okay, so as I said, this is a tem stands for atem, which is you, plural, in the subject uh, position. So meritem is you rebelled, from the word meri. P uh, literally is mouth, my mouth. So, well, well, doesn't the word, isn't that the word pay? Yes, standing by itself as a noun. Pay, is, it's, it's the letter pay and the letter H. By the way, the letter pay has an opening like a mouth. You, know, you can see that. So, because the letters are also usually an object of some kind. 
but here it's my mouth, uh, but it's translated by commandment. So sometimes this word substitutes for the word mitzvah, commandment. So you rebelled against my mouth where? Bamidbar Tzin. This is so in the desert of known as Tzin. That's the name of the desert. You'll see it translated like over here. It says Zin. But notice a little dot on top. A little dot here tells you that it's not just a letter Z. And that's Zin. It's Sin. That's a letter that doesn't exist in English. But it is a sound that exists in English at the end of words like Pits, right? Bits, okay. Cats. So, but it's it. cats, right? Yeah, right. Cats, right. Um, and now it makes it a little bit more specific in the incident that happened. So it was in this desert. Bim rivat ha eda. So we have to take these two things together. Now, just earlier we had the case of uh, Bnei Israel or Bnei Israel, and we said that that was masculine plural. It's the first word, and the mem falls out. Now we have a case of feminine singular, meriva. It's going to come up again down here. But the hey, now that the hey moved out, and a taf came in, because this is noun plus noun. We have meriva is a word for strife or contention, uh, and it's put together, and it's the strife of the congregation or, congreg or strife congregation. So, Mirivat Haeda, the strife of the congregation. And what was the nature of that strife? That what is what was failed to be done here? Lehakdisheni. What's you can see the word Kodesh or Kadesh or Kuf Dalet Shin, which is the root meaning of the word holy or sanctify. And so here, Lehakdish means as a verb, Lamed meaning two here. This is a, what I call a number five verb or a hifil for those of you that are knowledgeable in the seven categories of uh, action in Hebrew verbs. So the Hagadish means to sanctify, to set apart, to make special. And the ni here comes from ani. So just as we had tem here from atem, you plural, this ni comes, to, this is by, this is as I'm speaking, uh, you didn't do this for me. So the Hagadisheni means, as it was, it say, sanctify me. Okay? To sanctify me. Vamayim, you say, well, wait a minute, I thought it was supposed to be ba mine, ba mine. Yes, it normally would be ba mine, but because this particular letter is a in a certain category, and this sim this the last syllable here is open. We've talked about this before too. If the last syllable if the syllable of the last word is an open one, you say, well, what's the difference between open and close? Well, here we have tem -ma. my lips close, okay? I not ni I'm not closing my lips. The syllable is still open. So if the syllable is open, the dot drops out, and it goes from lagtisheni ba mayim to va mayim. Now, here in modern Hebrew, most people don't do that. Most people don't speak that way. But um, the technical Hebrew that we have in the Bible does. Va mayim, in the water. Now, this is, by the way, this is not just, uh, look right up here above it. We have ba, meaning in, with, without, uh, with two dots. And here we have, come down here, and we have the straight line, which is ah, this is it, like bimidbar, and this is ba mine. The reason it's ba here is it's in the. Oh, yeah. So right. the hay is not here. We <clears throat> normally have hama. Now, in rare cases in the biblical text, you might see that. I'm thinking of something in the book of Psalms. Very rare. But uh, generally, what happens is that the, I think the right word for it is subsumed. Nice scrabble word. The hay. Uh, gets absorbed, if you will, and becomes goes from b to ba. Interesting juxtaposition there to show us that today. Mayim is water, and by the way, the word Hebrew word for water is plural. Waters. There are a few mass nouns that are like that. Uh, chayim, life. Mayim, water. Now we have the word uh, that goes back to eyes. Le ene hem. So here's the word for eyes. Ayin. But when it's plural, it's a naim, and in this case, when we have it's belonging to them, is the word hem by itself is a subject uh, object as as the subject is means them or they they, so this is two eyes, they or there in this case as we break it down, le nehem, hem, and what are the now that's using the word hem the, that's we're referring back to the waters here in this case, hem. 
May Merivat Kadesh. So these are the now. This is interesting because here we have a case of noun plus noun with the water. Here's the word. See the yud and the mem here. Yeah. Here we have the yud, uh, and the mem has gone away. It's not May Meriva. It's May Meriva, um, and there are a lot of different combinations like that with water in the scripture I've seen. May Merivat Kadesh. So really, we have three nouns going on here. May Mayim. Merivat, like we had up here, strife. Kadesh is the area where it happened. Midbar Sin. So it's we've smushed it all together here to say that we're talking about the strife that occurred in an area called Kadesh, which is located in the desert of Sin. Okay, that's all I want to say. On okay, that. so, so really it. May is actually the word for water, and yes. Mayim is waters, basically. I got uh, they're it. both water. Yeah. So if I walk into a restaurant here in Jerusalem and I say, uh, "Kos mayim babakasha," or glass of glass of water, I don't. I wouldn't walk in and say, "Kos may." Okay. Um, but if they if they said, uh, uh, "Mayim ragil," regular, or "May gazos," "May gazos" means like is the soda, soda water. So. Oh, I see. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. Once again, more than you wanted to know. Well, not really. That was perfect. Thank you. Okay, let's okay. see. All right. Here's one you know. By the bear. This is the one you were talking about. Uh -huh. This is where you'll see. Uh, um, oh, yeah, this is the one that's backwards. <laughs> By the bear, Moshe El Hashem Lemor. Right. By the bear, Moshe El Hashem Lemor. Va, and the Yud stands for he in the future. The bear is the root word for speaking. So it, if I took off the the Vav here, and said Yedaber, it would be he will speak, but the Vav reverses it to he spoke. Talking about now Moshe to Hashem saying, or to say. Now, I'm just going to, because it's just a short little text with like five words to it, this is the only time that this combination, we, we're always seeing by Daber Hashem El Moshe, O Vayomer Hashem El Moshe. This is the only time that we run into Hashem spoke to Hashem. Uh, excuse me. See, I did it myself. <laughs> Moshe spoke to Hashem. <laughs> right. It's amazing. Right. Um, and this is very significant. It's it's like this is like one of those get your attention if you're a Hebrew text reader because it kind of pops off the page and you go whoa 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 what is this? All right. So this is familiar uh, territory we've covered before. So let's go on to sixteen. Okay, sixteen. Yif uh, Yif code Hashem Al uh, Elohe Harut Haruchot mm -hmm. Lakol. Uh, yeah, I'm going with that. Lakol Bas Basar Ish Al Haeda. Beautiful. Yif code Hashem. Elohe haruchot lechol basar ish al ha'ida. November will mark 10 years Tanakh Talk has actually been on the air. Very excited about that. To support my work here at this channel where I have all the different rabbis and teachers. And a lot of people go straight to the rabbis and support them. I also do need your help. So if I really ask you to consider donating to this channel on a regular basis if you can. TanakhTalk.com, there's a link there. There's also a Patreon link I'll probably have at the end of the video on an ad. I've did an analysis over the past six months and donation has dropped a lot on my side. Of course, I never talk about it. I only put the ad up sure. there. I have gigs that I do in the evening to help pay the bills and sometimes it's, uh, it requires more than less. But uh, if you guys have some to spare, please send it in. I could certainly use it to help us out with this channel. Okay, let's go through word by word. If code uh, will set, will appoint Hashem Elohei Haruchot. This is a combination, so uh, another word for God, ha, the, ruchot comes from ruach, spirit. It's plural, ruchot, spirits. Le, to, ho, all, basar, basar, flesh, ish, man, 
al, upon, concerning, about, ha, the, eda, congregation. So what does it mean? Yifkod, this word pakad, has several meanings. Um, again, we said Hebrew has fewer words of a vocabulary than, let's say, English or other languages. So one word might have to do the contextual duty of two, three words based, again, on the context. And that's what's true here. Yifkod means, in this case, to to um, establish, set up. Um, sometimes the word means reckon, and sometimes it means count. But here it means, uh, like it says here, set. Yifkod Hashem Elohei Haruchot. The, basically, the God of the spirits, lechol basar, of all flesh. It's a rare, it's a rare phrase that uh, is that Moshe is saying to, uh, it's really is a petition, it's, it's a prayer here. So he's saying, asking God to set the ish, a man, al, a person on the congregation. Why? Because he knows what's coming. He knows he's going to be passing. So he asks Hashem to set up someone to follow him, to be his successor, basically. Uh, I think that's all we need to say on that particular verse. Let's okay. move on. Okay, here we go. Asher Yetze Lifnehem Va'asher Yabo Lifnehem Va'asher Yotzi uh, Yotziem Yot uh, Yotz mm -hmm. Okay. Vaasher Yab Yabi uh Yabiem Strange mm -hmm. words for me. Valo Tihye Adat Hashem Katson Asher Ain Lahem Rotse. No, Roe. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Asher, which or who, Yetze, uh, will go out, Lifne him, before them. To, this really is to face of them. Nice. Which should be, you know, in the face, which that subject, that's what literally before means, because you look at somebody in the face, you're standing before them. Ve asher and which or who, yavo he he will come. The root meaning here is from the word lavo to come. You don't see the vav here, but it's there in other forms. And this is this yud here is standing for he. This is future. He will go. Lifnehem. We have the same word here again. Lifnehem before them. Ve asher. So once again, same thing here. Ve asher and who or which. Yotzi M will bring them out. So Yotzi is related to this word here. This is Yetze. This is one form of action. He'll go out. And this one, he, this is a Hifil, number five. He will take them out. So here he's going out. Here he's bringing them out. The, and the Mem here is talking about them. The same way we have the word Hem here, this same Mem is a, it's, it's, it's doing the duty of telling us it's talking about of them, say, and you can see from this. By the way, it takes a while to really master this because sure. they're not consistent. It didn't say v'yotzi him. It said yotzi him. Ve'asher. So the word comes up again, like here. Who or which? Yavim. Yeah. So just like we had here, yavo, he will come. Here we have he will bring. Because what does the word bring mean? Cause to come. All right. So, it, like, uh, I don't know, I, I went to the store, or I, I go to the store, I'll go to the store, and I will bring in the groceries. So I'm causing the groceries to come into the house. Same idea here, Yevi M. So we had here Yotzi M, he will take them out, and here he's going to bring them in. So he's going to take them out of the land they're not supposed to be in and bring them to the land they're supposed to be in. Velo, and, and not Tihye, uh, this is feminine. It could be you will be feminine, or it could be third person feminine. It will be or she will be. 
You have to look that one up. And it, you have to take this cluster here. Tihye Adat will be the congregation of Hashem. Because the word Adat or Eda, that's sitting by itself, congregation. When it's tied with uh, another noun after it, in what we call the noun plus noun, just like up here we had uh, Merivat Aida. So here we have the dictionary form of the word. Down here we have the word uh, Adat. It's it's in the noun plus noun, uh, creating a compound noun is what we call it in English. So Tie Adat Hashem, uh, it will be the congregation of the of Hashem. Basically, will be Ka Son, as sheep, which Asher Ain Lahem. There is not to them literally Lahem to them, or this is how we say. Um, they don't have, or they won't have in this case. Ain lahem. There is not to them what? Ro'e. Now, notice that this word ro'e, a lot of people say ro'e. Isn't that C? Yes, if it's an aleph. But what is it if it's an ayin? Well, everybody knows the famous Psalm 23, verse 1. Hashem ro'i lo echzar. Hashem is my shepherd. I will not be in a state of lack. So it's the same word here. Ro'e. And you can see it right here, shepherd. But I have to say again, I never really look at this. It's, it's, not, it's not in my field of vision. I'm just going straight in Hebrew. Um, there's some great things here, for the example, this word yetze. Um This is the root form of the word, yud, tzadi, aleph. And words that begin with a yud have some quirks to them because yud is a weak letter. Aleph is also a weak letter. And so they cause certain phenomena to, occur, to happen. The good news is that they are recurring phenomena. And if you learn one, you learn them all. Um, I, I'm resisting wanting to go deeper into this because we really have to cover some other ground here. But, but I'm saying to you, it just, I look at the craft of this tefillah, this prayer, and it blows my mind for the, the brilliance of its simplicity and its poetic structure. I mean, I just look, you don't see it so well in the English. A little bit, you can see that this person is going to go out before them, and as you go in before them, and you may lead them out, bring them in. It, it kind of bleeds through a bit in the English, um, but it's much more powerful, I think, in the, in the Hebrew itself. So let's uh, move on, and we'll end with this one, and then I have some comments to make. Okay. Vayomer Hashem El Moshe Kachlacha et Yehushua. I have a question about that in a minute. Uh, bin. Oh, Bin Nun. I want to say Nivan. Bin Nun. Ish Asher Ruach. Bo. Vesamchat. Uh, vasam. Excuse me. Vasamachta. Et. Yadka. Ale. Al. Alav. Beautiful. Vayomer Hashem El Moshe Kach Lecha Et Yoshua Bin Nun Ish Asher Ruach Bo Vesamachta Et Yadcha Alav Vayomer And said And said Hashem L two, Moshe, Kach, take command form, Lacha, to yourself for yourself, Et untranslatable, Yoshua, Joshua, Bin Nun, son of Nun, Ish man, Asher which, Ruach, spirit, Bo in him, Vesamachta, and placed. Et untranslatable Yadcha hand your alav upon him al upon and this is a nice. suffix indicating him. Okay. Okay. So Vayomer Hashem El Moshe, we've seen many, many times that Hashem said to Moshe, Kach is the command form. Uh as uh, from the word Lakach. Uh, or lekach, there's different forms of it, but lokeach in the present, take. Here it's commanding, kach lecha, take for yourself. 
Et Yoshua. Take um, Et is here because Yoshua is the name of Joshua is in the object position in the sentence. So you're going to put Et in front of that. So uh, usually we say Et Ha. That's only when it's Et Ha with a, a thing that requires the definite article like the. Uh, et Ha'ish, the man. Ani Ro'e, Et Ha'ish, I see the man. But if I, I know the guy's name and I'm saying his name, Ani Ro'e, Et Yoshua. Ani Ro'e, Et William. Ani Ro'e, Et Gabriel. Okay, so the He isn't there. And here's his uh, full name here, Yoshua Bin Nun, which is interesting that it's Bin Nun and not Ben Nun. There's, uh, the commentators talk about that. We don't have time to go into that. And what do we know about this Yoshua? Well, we know he was Moshe's principal disciple. And we now find a little bit more about him. Ish, a man, asher ruach bo, upon which, that, in which, you know, bo means in, in or in him, in which, they has their spirit upon him. It's a very special person. And he says, v'samachta et yadcha alav. And you placed, this word, the samach, it literally is like the placing of hands on someone. Um, like and and we get the word smicha, which is like rabbinic ordination comes from that. There's some other meanings of the word as well. Like when it says the priest uh, lays his hands upon the animal before the, before the sacrifice, uses the same word. But in this case, it's what's used for ordaining somebody, usually before they're um, anointed with the oil, lefneshe uh, mashachoto et yadcha alav. Okay, so there's there's more to be talked about in here as far as the uh, the meaning of all these amazing verses and what's happening prior to the death of Moses, but I want to get into a different subject now. Can I ask a question real fast? So on that last verse uh, where we read and it mentioned Yehoshua, um, uh -huh. so you know Christians like to say that Yeshua or Yehoshua, well Messianics really not not Christians so much. They like to say that the word uh, Yeshua, uh, or a form of that, means 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 salvation or means to save. Is that would it be accurate to say if that name was that meaning or no? Well, it's related to it for sure. The root meaning of it is, uh, you know, um, and we say like in Hallel in, uh, in, in Psalms 113 through 118 that we say at special holidays, you know, Ana Hashem Hoshia now, or the word Hosanna, by the way comes from this, the root word of this this, this uh, name. Uh, but we know that there's a kind of a rabid or fanatical need to paint Jesus into the biblical text. And so the fact that there's a commonality between Yoshua and Yeshua, okay, great, there's a commonality. The, the word Yeshua, the name Yeshua was not unique to Yeshua. <laughs> right. It's like, it's like Mary. It's, it's, a, it's like a million Marys right. in the world, right? That's right. That's right. So, Besides, wasn't his uh, name supposed to be, uh, you shall you shall call his name... Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Why come they didn't do that? <laughs> and in fact, the text in Isaiah 7, 14 says, she will call his name. Mm, and she never Emma did. Emmanuel. And she never did. So. And, what, and what did Matthew say? They will call. Oh, yeah. interesting. Little... Little tinkering with the text, which nice. we're going to segue into now. So you really set this up very well. You, you may have come up with a new uh, a new show possibility for us later on. Tinkering with the text. <laughs> oh, tinkering with I, the I text. I like the sound of that. <laughs> with tinker, with with, with Tinkerbell. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. This is a good segue for you to get right into your uh, your final stage. Okay, I'd like to do that. All right. So let's do a quick, um, just a really quick look at uh, what's the content of this parsha. It begins with a confirmation of the actions of Pinchas, uh, who is the son of Ele Eleazar, Eleazar, uh, Eleazar, the son of uh, Aaron. And the Shem says, I've given him my covenant of peace, Briti Shalom, or Ashkenazim Briti Shalom. And then we go on to, there's a new census because there'd been a plague. Because what? why did Pinchas uh, you know, radically kill two people? One being a uh, a prince of the tribe of Shimon or Simon, and the other this lady named Cosby, who was the daughter of uh, a leader from the Midianites. Uh, so the the Mid we have to remember that Bilam tried very much to get a curse upon Israel, 
none of the, it didn't work. So he came in by you know bringing in the showgirls, as it were, and he seduced them basically. He, he, he seduced many, many, caused many of the Israelites to sin by being seduced by the Midianite women who got them to eat food that wasn't kosher, and they practiced the uh, abominable practices of of Baal Peor, which was basically to, to de defecate on an idol in public. And I, can't, I can't imagine that, but that's that's what they did. Uh, and so there was a plague that resulted. A lot of people died after that plague, which was miraculously stopped by the actions of Pinchas. Then there was a new census taken. A lot of people, if you look at the numbers, a lot of people in the tribe of Shimon uh, per perished. Then we have an interesting little vignette that shows up in the text about the daughters of Slovachad, which had to do with uh, there were five daughters of a man that had no sons and what about their property rights coming into the land what would they get so this was the you know the way Torah's way of talking about sticking up for women's needs in this case it's a very uh, like powerful thing and then the text that we were just reading today talks about preparation for Moshe's passing and as well as we segue into the appointing uh, of Joshua Joshua as successor so that's kind of a real quick overview of what's in this particular parasha this week and then uh, the last thing is that there's quite a rest there's a long recitation of the daily and festival offer offering starting out with uh, uh, the daily then goes on to Shabbat and then it goes on to the various holidays through the year <clears throat> so it's almost feels like going back into the book of Leviticus so what I'm about to share with you I, I haven't heard anybody else talk about this doesn't mean they didn't but i didn't hear from rabbi singer or rabbi fedro or rabbi rafi mullet or from rabbi skobak uh, shannon newson or anybody that uh, i know in the um, small chabura as we call it fellowship of people that deal with this subject matter and it does relate to the parsha of pinchas in a very significant way because basically a talking to any christian and they'll say to you that prior to the ritual law of Moses, there was the law of faith. And of course, Paul talks about that in the book of Romans, book of Galatians. In Romans, he says, what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. It was credited to him as righteousness. Galatians 3, 6, you also know. Believe God, credit to him as righteousness. And we it comes from this text right here in Genesis 15, 6. Everybody knows it. When we look at the Hebrew, it says, Ve'he'emin ba'ashem ve'yachshveha lo Staka. So he believed in Hashem, and we could say counted, reckoned, credited to him righteousness. And so everybody says righteousness comes through faith, right? That's that's Christianity 101 right there. But there's something very interesting that I've as I said, I've never heard anybody talk about. Psalm 106, verses 30 and 31. First of all, it says, Ve'yamod pinchas v'ypalel v'te'atzer ha-magifah. V'ta'atzer, excuse me, v'ta'atzer ha-magifah. So pinchas stood up and stood pinchas and judged and was and was stopped, v'ta'atzer, the plague. So... The verse I really want to focus in on here, that's what he, how did he do that? We know he killed off those two people that were the principal transgressors that caused Israel to sin, where he was openly committing fornication in public. Then we look here, I want you to notice this word, and this word up here, Yachshaveha, it's the same root. You see here, Hashav, Hashav. So in this word, this this is telling us, and it will be counted to him basically uh, as righteousness. And this tells us that it was credited to him as right. This is a, the reversing vav. Techashev means was credited, um, and we see it down here. Reckoned to his merit. Let's Now here we have believing. And we, here we have someone doing an action. So what is it? Is it believing? Or is it doing the action? So this raises a very interesting question. And I, I could spend a lot of time on this, but I don't have time to do. Is it really faith alone in the New Testament? 
So I want to show you what 63 translations have to say on this subject. It's very interesting. So I'm pulling this up from Bible Gateway, not a gateway through which I walk very often, because I, I really, you know, I've memorized huge portions of the New Testament back in the day when I was a young minister, but uh, back in the Foursquare Church, but I, I, I don't really visit it very often unless I need to, as in this case. And uh, if we come down, by the way, down at the bottom here, you can see these are all the different translations that are used here. I had... I mean, I remember back in the day when there were like maybe 20 translations long ago when I was going through all this, 63 translations. And so I'm going to just use, you know, control F here. And here's the word work. Comes up 29 times. What does the verse say, actually, that we're focusing on? This is Revelation 22, 12. This is like one of the last statements that uh, Jesus makes you know, uh, from the heavenly position that John is giving for in, the, in the book of Revelation. Behold, I come quickly, my reward is with me to give to every man according as his work shall be. Why didn't it say faith? To give to every man according to his faith. Now, I mentioned this one time to a missionary here on the streets of Jerusalem. He said, oh, well, it says in John chapter 6 that the work of God is to believe on the one whom God has sent. So that's what the work is there. Really? Because that's not, not everybody else agrees with it. How about I put an S right here? Works. So at least three times in here in these translations, it's giving us the word works. You can see it. Is there one down here? Yes. Okay. To yield to each man after his works. And according to his works. Here, the amplified version, the merit of his deeds, earthly works, faithfulness. So let's put in here the word deed. Shows up 10 times. And how about deeds? Okay, shows up 10 times. Does that, does that really stick there right correctly? Let's do that again. Yeah, 10 times. So do you see faith in here anywhere? I don't see faith in here That's anywhere. That's a big negative. So the, imagine, well, first of all, we know that the first part of this phrase didn't happen. You know, behold, I come quickly. Right. No, 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 no. Right. And, and why do you say, you say well, well, a day with the Lord is a, like a thousand years, and so 2,000 years is two days with God, except... That Jesus said, actually, there are some standing here who will not taste of death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom, his glory, right? In, at the end of John. Is it the end of John? I, see, I, it's been so long, I don't remember the verses anymore. But I remember the text. And so he didn't come back quickly. And he's saying here, according to what the person's work, and we're showing here, look, the, mer the merit of his deeds. So it was the merit of his deeds that caused Pinchas to be given Brit, Briti uh, Shalom my covenant of peace it's the action that he took and that was credited to him as righteousness and it's now christians have said to me but there are none righteous there are no not one i go through take a concordance look at the many times that the word righteousness shows up in the hebrew bible particularly in psalms look at psalm 37 can you it's numerous times can you pull up uh go up two verses i mean go down two verses to 22 14 i believe i can because um, that confirms everything you were just teaching and everything Christians pretty much deny. Really? Okay, well, I'm happy to investigate that. Yes, sir. This one? Uh, yep, uh, hold on a second. Uh, do, do King James. Okay. Because that's, what, mo that's what most real scholars say. All right, King Jimmy. King Jimmy. Yeah. That's funny. So that's a living okay, battle so still. Let's... You might have to hit search or something. Well, it should go through and show it to there me. There you go. Okay. There it is, right there. Verse 4. Ah. Wow. I had forgotten about this one. I didn't look at the whole context when I was preparing yeah. this. But they said, do his commandments. Wow. So and this is interesting because this shows up at the end of the book of Revelation. Right. At the end of the book of Malachi... And I've heard Rabbi Singer and others talk about this many times. What is the injunction at the end of Malachi? It says, remember the law of Moses. Whoa, okay. wow. Nice. All right. So it's an interesting kind of juxtaposition nice. of things here. But we know, and again, Rabbi Singer's talked about it many times. I've spoken at it, about it on occasion. Uh, next month, we're getting into the book of Deuteronomy. And the end of De Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, around verse 12, was where Paul corrupts the text and says, uh, uh, it's in your heart, in your mouth. And he goes and says, the law of faith 
And that's not what Deuteronomy says. Deuteronomy says it's in your heart and in your mouth that you may do it. Right. La sota, la sotam is the Hebrew word. Okay. So to do them. So the the Tanakh's perspective on the commandments is that they are divinely given and able to be done. And they are a means of connecting with God and they are valid throughout history. And there are several of them say, you know, Ad Olam forever, like Shabbat is a forever thing. And so this is interesting that this shows up. I, I really appreciate you bringing that out. Thank you very, very much. Sure. So sure. I hope this is helpful to some people as we as we look at the, the you know, the context of all of this here. Um, you go back to this, and you, if somebody wants to take a screenshot of this, you certainly can. Because again, what we're saying too is that this phrase that's popularly given as the justification for just believing in through faith uh, is really negated when you see that the same idea credited to him as righteousness, and here we have credited to him as as, righteous, as righteousness without the without the uh, as, and it's the same thing. So it's not either or, it's both and. There's faith and there's action, and the two go together. And they're not negated by the giving of the commandments at Har Sinai. There was supposed to be a 1,300-year schoolmaster, which Paul calls the law, schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. No, 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 no. That's not the case. So uh, thank you for all of you sincere believers out there, because I don't think of you as cunning deceivers. You're very sincere believers, but you're sincerely wrong. Uh, because the Hebrew text, uh, you know, clarifies and really negates what you've been taught is the truth. Uh, it's not. Yep. So I suggest you pull out your Hebrew dictionary, start learning, get on the bandwagon, and, and get with the program, and get ready to receive Messiah, and it won't be the one you think it is. And so you say, well, we'll just ask him if he's been here before. Well, but according to you all, we're going to be burnt toast. So... What a miserable God that is, right? I just yep. can't, I can't believe it. The Hebrew God is much more merciful. So you know, I had this conversation yesterday with the with the fellow, and I'll keep it short because I know you got to run. Um, a, a, yeah, a new friend that I met at at one of my night jobs that I do, and uh, he seemed to understand a little bit of Hebrew. And I was telling him, he was telling me about how uh, the concept of you know the New Testament is very so kind and loving and forgiving. And I was like, it's interesting that the New Testament demands a blood sacrifice for every for every sin, but in Tanakh that's not the case. He goes, what do you mean? <laughs> and that, that opened up a whole door of. We talked for probably an hour and a half, and he was just completely blown away by the little mm -hmm. things. It's amazing. Just got to be open minded. And, yes, sir. Well, well, a hundred percent. You're a hundred hundred percent. And I, I think some of the cruelty of the New Testament is is uh, brought out in passages like. Uh, he that believes shall be saved, and he that doesn't believe will be damned. Yeah, right. Uh, and so there, there, there again we go. And I, the, what the, the, I, used to, I remember being a street evangelist, which I was, uh, especially in my late teen years. I was out on the streets preaching, and people would say, well, what about the people that never heard? And I'd say, well, they'd be judged by the light that they had. Well, the light that they had was based on the deeds that they did. Okay? Right. <laughs> so how they lived their life. People yeah. want to know what I really believe. Look at what I do. Right. What I do <clears throat> testifies to what I truly believe. And the, the Hebrew Bible is very clear, as you just referred to it, to the fact that uh, people could be forgiven without a blood sacrifice. So when Christians make this allegation, and they're basing it on uh, you know Hebrews 9, that uh, without the shedding of blood there's no remission of sins, and tying that to Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, which we know is taken out of context, we, we have... Many, many cases. Uh, I, I could go through quite a long list of them, and we've done it before on the show, um, to show d definitively, categorically, undeniably, that forgiveness is available without the shedding of blood. Right. There's one case where, where Moshe asks Hashem for forgiveness for the people, and Hashem says, Salachti kidvarecha, I have forgiven according to your word. There's no blood sacrifice. Just by there. asking, yeah. Just by asking. Looking okay. at Nineveh, same uh, thing. Or the, or, or the famous yeah, Nineveh is a good case in point, and Second Chronicles seven, uh, fourteen. Yep. Okay. If, uh, that they're, they're all there. It's just a matter of taking off the Christian hermeneutic glasses. Yep. And looking at it through the lens of Hebrew. Anyway, I got a million things to do here before Shabbat. Brother, thank, thank you, you so very much, much for your William, time for hosting this. You're, You're welcome. very welcome. Great Once job again, today. I, adjure, I, I adjure everybody. Please, please, please go to the Patreon and buy William a cup of coffee this month. If uh, a lot of people do a little goes a long way to keeping this thing coming to you uh, free Jeez. and 
uh, flowing. <laughs> Let's go sure with that. Is. Sure right. is. All the best, everybody. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you same time, same place next week. Because I'm willing. Take care, my friends. Um, my dear friends, hope this message finds you well. If you like the way this channel is going and the channel has been a blessing to you, please consider supporting the channel by going to the website, tanaktalk.com, T-A-N-A-C-H-T-A-L-K.com. Thank you once again for your time and for supporting Tanak Talk. Shalom. Shaifa, we have